Now, the Conservatives need to put aside their internal differences on tax cuts and concentrate on reforms that will encourage growth. That's the warning today from Tony Danker, Director General of the CBI, who also says the UK will lose £4.3 billion worth of investment in green technology by the end of the decade unless more is done to encourage it. And I'm pleased to say Tony Danker joins me now. Tony, welcome to you. I mean, you've, you've four proposals to stimulate growth, the, the first of which is to, to replace the uh, soon-to-expire super deduction. Yeah, that's right, Ian. Good morning. Uh, this was a very bold idea, actually, from Rishi Sunak, uh, and he was still promoting it six months ago during the leadership contest. What he said was, look, we clearly have a problem with business investment in Britain. He's right. So he decided to do something quite dramatic, to put up in six weeks' time corporation tax by six points overnight, but to put alongside that a super deduction to encourage people to invest. Now, what he essentially was saying was, look, Companies that invest in Britain should pay less tax than companies that just pay profits to shareholders. We supported that. The problem is they're only going to do half of it. They're only going to put the taxes up. There's not going to be incentives to invest. And what we say today is that's going to drop us from fifth to 30th in the OECD tax competitiveness lead tables. I really think he needs to go back to his original instincts, which say, yes, we're going to have a two-tier tax system for businesses. If you invest, you pay less tax. If you don't invest, that's your choice, but you will pay more tax. But that's not what's about to happen, Ian. Tony, isn't the problem, though, that, I mean, there's not much evidence to suggest that the super deduction has actually encouraged much business investment? No, we disagree with that, Ian. What, what it's done is, for those firms who were eligible for it, it has absolutely stimulated investment. The problem was twofold, really. One is it ruled out leased assets, so that probably takes out most of your SME community. And secondly, it was only for two years, whereas for most firms, their investment cycles are seven years. Whereas if we had, and we're not proposing, by the way, a super deduction, we're promoting something called full expensing. If that became a permanent feature of our tax regime, if you were allowed to get the cash flow benefits for your investments in one year rather than spread over time, we think that would have a massive impact on investment. And it would do, not for everybody, what the super deduction did for a smaller number of firms. Now, what about uh, green investment? I mean, you, you, you're quite stark there in terms of what you set out. I, I guess the collapse last week of British Vault underlines it. Yeah, look, this is a bit of a shock, right? Because if we're being honest, we have led the world on this in the last 10 years, right? And it's only really in the last year or two that the competitive game has changed. Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act is attracting an awful lot of global investment because of the way it uses tax credits for green investment. And then secondly, the Europeans last week have said, we're going to compete too. Forget state aid and state subsidy. We're going in as well. So suddenly, yes, we find ourselves behind, not ahead on green growth. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that if the government accept that challenge uh, and start to think smart about how Britain competes, then we can keep up with them. But let's be honest, we can't keep up with those US levels of subsidy. So we're going to have to not outspend them, but outsmart them. Is it going to be possible, though, to, to close the gap? I mean, how do you define outsmarting them? Yeah, look, I think there's a few things we need to do in our green strategy. The first one is that we need to build it off our unique strengths, right? We are geologically advantaged, right? We've got amazing amount of wind. We've got the potential to lead the world in carbon capture and storage because of the North Sea. We've got the City of London, which can be the world's leader's green market. So we have some real strengths, number one. Number two, there are going to need to be some subsidies in areas where you need to pump prime uh, technology that is pre-commercialization. But the biggest device are these contracts for difference. That's where government stands behind the risk for the private sector in terms of getting their returns. And lastly, it's the old favorite, planning permissions. You know, we are bending over backwards to try and put cables to connect the grid, to try and keep EV charging infrastructure from upsetting anybody, let alone not doing onshore wind and solar. I'm afraid the reality for the Conservative government now, and it's hard because it's an anathema for them, they can say we're not going to compete on subsidies or they can say we're not going to compete on planning permission, but they can't say both and keep up with where the rest of the world is moving now. Now, we've also got some recommendations on the, the skills and labour shortages. I mean, what, what I'm struck by looking at what you, you're going to say today, is you, you seem pretty resigned to the government not changing its current tack on migration. Yeah, I think that's right. Look, when I talk to politicians in private, they're all clear that our suggestion that you use immigration in the short run, fixed term visas, until we've got a perfect labour market, 
they all realize that's reasonable, but they can't say it in public because they're incredibly aware that the British public doesn't want to see more economic migration. Uh, now, if that's right, and listen, I'm not a professional politician, that's their call, then it does mean that the other policies on the labor market, they need to do all the work that immigration was gonna help us with, right? So government's been talking about childcare, but not being that serious about it. We need to get serious about it. We need to get serious about getting people who are economically inactive back into work. And we need to get serious about skills. Business and government both do a bad job at skills. The government spends less on adult skills than almost all our European competitors. Now, immigration is a quick way and a, and a temporary way to solve some of those problems. If you take it off the table, then what have you got instead? All right, Tony, we've got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for spending the time. Cheers, Ian.